Hey everyone, Gary Simon of course, Cetro.com, and today we're going to be looking at the CSS grid. Now, when I designed my very first layout in the mid-90s, I remember using HTML tables to structure the layouts with the aid of image slicing tools like Fireworks. Now then, we moved to inlines and floats for quite some time, and after that came Flexbox, and now we've arrived at the CSS grid. Now, the CSS Grid solves layout problems that no other CSS solutions can handle well. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to build a layout, this one right here, and get your feet wet with the CSS Grid. Now remember, this tutorial is really no way going to be comprehensive. It will just serve as a quick starter that will hopefully facilitate your eagerness to explore the full potential of the CSS Grid. So this is the layout that we're gonna build. Um, I kept it pretty simple so that we can breeze through this with relative ease. It's just a fictional layout meant to espouse some of my snobby libertarian views. I like to mix things up. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. Uh... I have my code editor here, Visual Studio Code, open with a 100% blank, empty uh, grid project folder. So go ahead and create that and just open up whichever code editor you want. And we're just going to keep things real succinct and precise as possible. So that means we're not going to include any frameworks or build tools. We're literally only going to work with a single HTML file, CSS, and an image file. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, make sure to visit the project, uh, the written version, and that way you can just uh, copy and paste the code under project setup that we're about to do. So we're going to create a new file called index.html, and I'm going to paste in this just very starting point of our HTML file. Um, so nothing really happening here except we're importing a Source Sans Pro font from Google Fonts, and then also... Uh, we're linking an index.css file right here. So let's go ahead and create that file as well. We'll just keep that blank. And then finally, um, also go ahead and download a, the, we're going to have the single um, graphic. It's that little icon that you saw earlier. This is the URL actually right here, s3amazonadios.com, Corsetro, logo.png, that's all it is. Um, so make sure you save this somewhere, just right click and save image as in your in the same project folder. All right, so here it is. These are our three files. So let's go ahead and start defining the actual HTML. So we're gonna work here on the body tag and control B to get rid of that sidebar. And coming up here, we're just going to put in a header element with a simple link. Now, ordinarily, you would probably have, you know, a navigate a navigation of some sort. All right, but we're going to keep things, you know, quick and easy. And then also a div class of container and a div ID of content. And then we're going to do an H1 down with the state. And then also I'm going to copy and paste real quick just from the reference HTML in the written tutorial so I don't have to type everything out. This right here. All right, so it's very simple as you can see, and this simply handles um, this section. So this is the header, and then this is the content section that we just added. Uh, we have to add this as well, though. One second. So after that, we're just going to have a simple image source to our logo.png. All right, the next, we're just going to consider the stuff down here uh, part of a footer. So we'll wrap everything in a footer element. And then we'll put it, we'll just denote these as unordered list items. All right, and then I'm just going to paste a couple things. Really, this is just filler text. Um, and then We'll just copy this because we copy just like this and I want to copy this and then make things easier actually um, we can just do this real quick we'll copy it like that like that and then just copy these three I actually want to have six of them 
All right, just like that. So now let's collapse this whole thing. All right, so that's all the HTML is that we need to worry about. So now let's focus on just from, you know, defining some basic uh, CSS rule sets. And we're not gonna mess with the CSS grid just yet. We wanna get the aesthetic stuff out of the way. Um, so by the way, if we go hit Control-B, right-click, reveal and explore, we can open this up. And this is what it looks like so far without any CSS. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Now we're gonna to go to the index.css file. And I'm gonna do just, uh, instead of typing everything out, just copy and paste from the reference written tutorial. Um, again, this is the body. We're just changing the font. We're working the background color, margin zero, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're gonna reference the A elements, the links. Again, nothing exciting happening here. In fact, this is a little bit silly. I'm just gonna paste the rest in here. And you can see there's not too many, just about 43 lines of rule sets. You know, we have our, our image here. We have our header that we're setting to background color. The container giving some padding, footer, background, margin zero. You know, nothing is really happening here too much. Uh, so yeah, now let's get to the part where it's actually gonna structure the layout. So again, at this point, this is what our, our page looks like. All right, so obviously it doesn't really quite look like this yet. You know, th this needs to float over here. These need to float next to each other. How do we do that using the new CSS grid? Okay, so let's go ahead back to our code editor. And before we do that though, I wanted to kind of give a breakdown of what's happening in this layout. So essentially we have this uh, outer section here that's outlined in this yellow border and this is what we would place on um, in the in the container element which is container class the display grid property all right so that's how you define a grid it's very simple it used to be display inline or display block or display flex this is display grid now we have to ask ourselves uh next with inside of it what do we have in terms of you know our layout positioning? Well, we have this section over here, and then we have this little uh, logo graphic over here. So when it comes to the grid, you think in terms of columns and rows. So this right here, we just have one row going on, and then we have two columns, one and two. So it's up to us, up to, us to use the specific grid rule sets to define what's happening here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first step, by the way, just to look at the reference, we have our div container. Then we have two child elements. We have our uh, content and our logo. These are going to serve as both of our columns. So to do this, we find our container and we're going to say display grid. Save it. And at this point, what happens? Nothing. It's because we have to add another property so that property is grid, template, columns. All right, so I'm going to put in for the first column a value of say 66%. And by the way, you can use any other of the other standard values. And then for our second column, which is the logo element, I'm gonna put in simply auto. So this defines two columns because we have two values separated by a space and then another value. So let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. There we go. Very, very simple as you can see. All right, so what about this part down here? Everything's just kind of floating on top of each other, yet we want to have, you know, reverting back here, three columns with two rows. All right, so let's go back to um, our UL element because going back to our index, we'll see we have our footer and then we have our UL. The UL is probably, or the unordered list element is where it makes most sense to place uh, the display grid property on because we have our child elements inside of it. So we're gonna put in display grid and then also grid template 
columns. Now we could just do, because we want three, remember, and we want them of equal width. Auto, auto, auto. And then also grid template rows, auto and auto. Now rows, of course, we didn't have to add this one up here. There's simply one row. Now grid template rows, we want two of them. So we split things up into two. And what we'll do down here, all right, so now we can see we have these bullets. We can remove that momentarily. Uh, but we can see now they all float less. Uh, it, it looks a lot, obviously, closer to the mock-up. Very simple, as you can see. By the way, let me add list style type none. All right, so this right here, isn't that a little bit repetitive? And this as well. Well, there's a shorthand way, and we can use repeat the number of times is the first parameter, so we'll say three, and then the value of what the we want them to be, which is auto. Do the same thing here. Repeat to auto, save, and you'll see we have the same result. Very, 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 very simple. Okay, so going forward, let's go ahead and take this uh, element over here and center it appropriately. All right, so the CSS grid allows children or items to be aligned quite easily. And we can use justify self. So we're coming back up to our image, justify self, and then where do we want it? Center. Save, and there we go. All right, so let's talk about nesting the CSS grid and template areas. So you can, of course, it would be ridiculous if you couldn't nest the CSS grid so you can have grids within grids. So let's do this by actually making the body element its own grid. So here's what I mean. We'll go back up here. We're going to say display grid. So now what's going to happen is the children of the body tag right here here and here where we could see there's three of them are all now going to be affected by this body being a grid so let's also put in grid template columns auto we're just going to have one and then we're going to have grid template rows we're going to have three of them because if you look we have one up here one right here and then one right here. So we're going to put auto for the first one, which is the header, 60% here and then 40%. And then we're going to define areas, so grid template areas. Now this is going to look a little weird if you've never seen this before. So we'll say header, body, and footer. All right, so what is happening here? Well, basically, uh, this grid template areas allows us to position the various grid areas, which we haven't yet defined, by referring to their name and situating them in the value of this property. So we have one right up here at the top, this one, and this one. All right, so in order for this to work, we have to use the grid hyphen area property on the actual children and give them the appropriate names. So we do this, we'll find our first one, which is header. We named it header up here, or we referred to it as header. So we're gonna add grid area header. Now we have to take our container. We're gonna call this one body. And then we're gonna come down to our footer and this was grid area footer. Now, if we save this, you're gonna see not much will be changed. Actually, nothing changes. Uh, what happens, however, if we change, we make our footer the header, and we'll take the header at the bottom. Look at that that was previously never possible with just html and css so let's revert this and now let's uh, 
discuss the responsive CSS grid. So this, this means using media queries and then using the grid to adjust things and properties. So well, let's say for instance, I, on you know smaller mobile devices or whatever, we wanted to change the grid template area or just change things around. Sometimes it does make sense to do that depending on how your layout is situated. So let's go ahead and then to just paste a media query right here. So this is saying that um, viewports at 500 pixels or smaller. We'll say body and we'll take our grid template areas property and we'll say header before it was body and we'll say footer here is now and then body all right so let's save that we're going to refresh it's back how it was normally and we're going to drag this in until we get to 500 pixels there we go awesome now this looks like crap, obviously, because these shouldn't be floating left to each other still. So how do we fix that? Very simple. We'll reference right here our unordered list and container. And we'll say grid template columns is auto. Grid template rows is auto as well. And we'll save it. Let's refresh and scale it in and now they're all on top of each other because we defined just one column in one row now let's go ahead and center this text because it looks like crap come back and refresh and there we go And that is really all there is to it. Now, however, we have only just begun to touch the possibilities of the CSS grid. There are plenty of other properties and values that give you an immense amount of control over your obviously more complex layouts. So I suggest taking a look at this right here. This is from CSS Tricks, Snippet CSS Complete Guide Grid. And it gives you, um, for instance, basics and, and browser support. This is um, real important. And also down here, properties for your parent, which is the grid container, or where you display grid, and then properties for the children. And you can see that there's quite a bit of them. And there's some things, obviously, that we haven't touched on. But this was just meant to be a real short and quick starter just to get your feet wet. All right, so hopefully this quick crash course will be enough to intrigue you going forward with the CSS grid. 